In the movies, people are often plagued by otherworldly creatures. And in the 1950s, these monsters seemed to come out of the woodwork. These black and white demons were all brought to life by monster maker Paul Blaisdell. Paul was really great at creating like monsters and creatures and stuff on account of his imagination. He was just, he could create stuff out of nothing. There's never been another creature that's even come close to looking like that. Memorabilia collector Bob Burns was Paul Blaisdell's close friend and assistant. Although Paul had been an illustrator for science fiction novels and fan magazines, he got into movies in a small way, creating this hand puppet for the beast with a million eyes. It was really neat. He just sculpted it in clay. He just painted rubber over the top of it, different thicknesses, so he got it thick enough, slid it up the back, and made the puppet out of that and then stuffed the arms with cotton, and he was actually in the scene working the puppet and making it move. Paul Blaisdell became a master of B-movie monsters. He labored with minuscule budgets and unbelievably tight schedules. In the 50s, the normal shooting schedule was seven days. That's it. That's really fast. I don't know anybody today that could build a monster as fast as he could. Sometimes you do them in two and a half, three weeks very fast. He was never really totally satisfied with anything he ever did because he knew he could do better if he had that one extra week. Paul always usually wore the monster suits. It was just cheaper for him to act in them, for them to get an actor to do it. He knew how to work the suits. That was just part of his deal of, okay, you build the suits, you wear the suit, and that's it. Paul's favorite monster role probably was the she-creature. The she-creature was supposed to be a lady who had regressed back in time to her prehistoric self. In 1956, Blaisdell designed his most bizarre creature, for it conquered the world. The monster was built to stay in a cave. It always supposed to be in a cave. The eyes glowed, and you saw these big teeth, and you really couldn't get a real good look at it. And we were at a sneak preview to see it. And everybody was screaming and yelling, having a great time, till at the very end it came out into the sunlight out of the cave and then started getting belly laughs, because it did look kind of silly in, in just bright light. And Paul was very upset about that. He, he never uh, really got over that. In the early 1960s, Paul's discouragement with the constraints of B-movie making led him to turn his back on Hollywood. When he died of cancer in 1983 at the age of 56, his death went largely unnoticed. Today, the films of Paul Blaisdell are viewed by a new generation of monster fans. People seem to really like these films better now. And I think because they were like unique monsters, uh, they weren't over sophisticated by any means. And so people could really identify a little bit more with them, had a lot more fun. Horrific special 